Hey guys, it's Shelby with Farmhouse Living and welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, we talk about all things home. So if you're into that, make sure that you subscribe. So today we're talking about how to design a room and actually finish it. And if you're like that, where you feel like you've got all these projects all at once, you know your living room's not done, your guest room's not done, there's always a bunch of halfway done projects. That's kind of how I roll with my own house. And so I thought it would be fun as I finish my master bedroom to show you guys behind the scenes in our process to actually designing and completing a space. So. We do this with design clients all the time. Mom and I are um, a design team together, but for some reason with my own house, I just <laughs> never take myself through my own process. The interesting thing about my master bedroom is it actually used to be my garage. So my husband and I bought this house about three years ago, maybe four, and um, I shared this last week when we shared our DIY vertical shiplap video. And so if you wanna know how to put in vertical shiplap, you can, I'll link that in the cards. This house was two bedrooms and we knew it needed a third. An addition um, would have cost more, but also there was just not a good place to kind of put, it just didn't make sense. So we decided to go ahead and convert our garage and we had, I mean, really an awesome experience overall. I've seen some really bad garage conversions where you can just tell from the outside, but we had some really great masons who were able to salvage some old brick and put that on the outside. And then the inside, our hardwood guys were just amazing and able to just merge the old hardwoods with the new hardwoods and make them look like they're all original. And so anyways, just the whole, you know, it's pretty amazing. Sometimes I stand in the room and I can't believe that was once a garage. But with that being said, I still, I was amazed by that and then just never finished the room. So I wanted to take you along for that process. Tip one on completing your space is to gather inspiration. I feel like this is really obvious. You start a pin board, you, you know, collect inspiration, but I feel like there's some very specific tips on how to do this. And I feel like a lot of people get stuck here because they don't find the perfect inspiration. So, so create your board, get going, and once you, you know, the, the tricky part about Pinterest is you gotta find, you have to have the perfect keywords. So you might be like, modern farmhouse, master bedroom. Well, that's gonna give you a spectrum. You could see some with like a European flair, a lot of vintage finds. You could see something that's a little bit more femi feminine, industrial, boho. I mean, like modern farmhouse, has kind of, I feel like design is really fun because all these styles are mixing together now, but it's also, gets really confusing to find that perfect inspiration to kind of launch from because there are so many things that overlap at this point in the design world. And so kind of where I go is I, I just pour a glass of wine or if it's in the morning, I have a cup of coffee and I start searching things that could potentially be that. So for our bedroom, I put in modern farmhouse. I put in um, California cool, California cool bedroom. I just wanted something kind of eclectic, kind of fun. Um, I put boho farmhouse. So far, Farhemian, what do they call it? <laughs> you know, like I just would put stuff in and honestly for a while I it took me a long time to find something that really caught my eye. And so then the cool thing about Pinterest is once you find something that you like, so you something just stops your scroll. Once you click that, you pull that open and you scroll beneath that, it's going to give you all these suggested pins that look like that one pin. So although it might be hard to find that first pin, after that, it kind of snowballs from there. You find a lot of really neat stuff. So for me, it was this one pin that had blue and red layered pillows with a really funky rug and a, um, like a beach scene over it. That kind of was the one thing where I was like, yes, that's where I want to go with this room. And so from there, I, I opened that pin, scrolled down, and found some really good stuff. 
I like to give myself at least a week to pin. I feel like that sounds like a long time and people when they you know, want to finish a space, they start to rush. But the thing is, you don't wanna get frustrated because you can't find that. And there's so much on Pinterest and really on the internet in general that you wanna give yourself time to find it and also not get distracted or frustrated or whatever. So if you're doing it like, you know, for 30 minutes at night, while you're relaxing on the couch or um, you know whenever it allows you to kind of take in the inspiration in the dose that you can handle because I mean even as a professional in the industry it's sometimes you can get overloaded you know when you scroll on Instagram too much and you're like oh this is just <laughs> I just did way too much we only have the capacity for so much and you want this to be enjoyable so not only do I find inspiration on Pinterest, but I also love Instagram, which I feel like everyone does, but I don't feel like people have a really practical way of gathering inspiration. I feel like we just screenshot and then hope we remember to scroll back to that portion. But if you're really intentionally designing, the best thing you can do is pull out your phone, pull out the Instagram app, and I don't know if you've seen this, but on the bottom right side corner of a post, you, so say you're scrolling, you're scrolling, you're scrolling, and something just like, bam, smacks you in the face, and you're like, wow, I really, I love this. This is a fireplace. You can push save, and then you can push save to, and you add, and you can say, master bedroom inspiration. So now you have a board on Pinterest, but you also have a board on Instagram, and you can go back and forth. On Instagram, sometimes I'll find things through hashtags, but a lot of times I'll just let it come as I'm scrolling. And because some people, especially the really, I find that a lot of the people that are like really great at interior design, maybe they're not so savvy on, you know, online stuff. So maybe they're not putting that um, hashtag that's, you know, modern farmhouse you know, whatever. It's not as searchable as you'd like it. So letting that inspiration come to you is the best way to do that with Instagram. And then lastly, I really love books and magazines. I feel like a lot of people write this off, but if you're really, especially if you're designing an entire house or multiple rooms, having a good book that you can get your hands on and get your, you know, next step is I feel like where people skip a lot, they skip this step, is making a design board. So I feel like the reason they skip it is because they think you have to be super tech savvy or like a professional graphic designer or professional interior designer to make a board that's super effective. Honestly, even if you get a piece of paper and cut things out of magazines to see what goes together, whatever you can do, I feel like having it on paper is going to help you actually complete the space. So, um, like, for me, I use Canva, an app called Canva, and I'm actually on the blog post. If you go down in the description, I am going to um, make you some templates on Canva. So you can get on there and literally just use it. It's free. Um, they do have some premium features that you can use, but um, it's super, super helpful to be able to see everything together. Does this chair go with this couch? Does this bed go with this? you know, bench or whatever. It shows everything together so you can get a really fun mix of things and see how they go together. So for me, as I was pinning, when I started to put my um, board together, I saw one common thread in all of my pins, which was vertical shiplap, which kind of surprised me. I was like, I guess I really like that. And so I made sure that was the first thing I put on the board. The next thing I saw was that I liked a lot of white with pops of color. So lots of blues, lots of reds. So that color scheme is a little out of the box for me. I normally use neutrals, you know, like white and black and tan and grays and things like that. So for me, being like, wow, I really love that blue and the red, I needed a design board to see that that was going to work together. I couldn't have just been like, oh yeah, let me hop on Etsy and, um, find a pillow, the, this like pillow combination. I had to put it all in one place to see it. And um, so if you pin and you find that you're kind of attracted to some out of the box looks, there's something that is captivating you about something that's a little 
creative or unique or whatever, then this is really gonna help you actually execute your design. The best method is just to start layering them on the board. You can um, see what's really going together, put everything all in one place, and then from there, pull back. So I put the vertical ship lap, then the headboard, and then the pillows, the bedding, you know, a dresser that kind of looked like what I was going for, layered it all in, and then there were things that I'd be like, mm, that doesn't work, and then replace it with something that did work. And it's a process. I don't do it all in one sitting. I try to, you know, take, you know, 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, and kind of just until it feels like it sinks, like it feels like, yes, this all goes together. Literally, my mom uses an app on her phone called Collageable, and it is not like, like it's not something that it looks like a graphic designer does, did, but it's super practical even at that level. So whatever you need to do to get it all in one place, like I said, I've got Canva templates, super simple. You don't have to be very tech savvy to be able to do it. That's where I make it happen. And so, yeah, I would love to see your design boards. If you make some, make sure to message me on Instagram and I'll even give my feedback if you'd like. So, the next thing, I feel like people are like, no, I don't want to talk about budget, but I feel like the reason it's important is because a lot of people blame their budget for not being able to complete their home, when in reality, if they had everything on paper, they would either see that, oh, that can be done over time, that's not as expensive as I thought, or this is worth saving for, or I can DIY this. So there's a lot of different options where you can kind of manipulate your budget to work for you to create a home that you love. Once you have that design board, you put everything on paper. So um, for your budget. So a good example of finding ways to save money is, so I really liked this kind of um, linen covered relaxed linen covered like slip covered headboard or bed i saw it at restoration hardware like three thousand dollars i saw it at lulu in georgia and it was like thirty eight hundred dollars i did not it was kind of trendy kind of unique and i didn't know i knew i loved it now i love it now but am i gonna love it in two years is it gonna be something that stands the test of time i just I didn't feel like that, so I didn't want to invest in that. So I actually DIY'd that. I just got a piece of plywood, two um, a wooden post, and then wrapped it with with uh, batting. And then I had a friend help us make a slip cover. My friend Charlie's mom, super talented, helped us make a slip cover out of drop cloth. The entire thing cost me like eighty five dollars. So I feel like thirty eight hundred dollars. $85. Looking at your budget, looking at what's worth investing in, what you can DIY, you know, like my vertical ship lap. So anyways, I think you get the picture. Don't blame your budget. Don't not, don't let that hold you back. Don't be afraid of thrifting, treasure hunting, DIYing. The on online is a reason you can literally do anything. You can learn how to do anything on Pinterest. So don't let that hold you back. Okay, so the next thing to do is make sure that you set your timeline. So uh, you can do it over time. You could say, I am gonna do this over a year if it's a big project, like your living room or your kitchen. You could set it, I'm gonna do it this weekend if it's reasonable. But I think marking your calendar and really saying, I'm gonna knock this out at this time is the best way to actually finish a project. I'm guilty of that. I'm a design procrastinator for my own home, um, mostly because I'm working on clients, you know, like my dad does auto repair for a living and my oil has never changed. I think it's just kind of how it's the, you know, how it goes. But I know that you guys are in the same boat because we've talked about lingering projects before. The last step is decorate and enjoy. And so what that looks like, I think is actually slowing down and doing one project at a time. So don't, um, try to complete your whole house in a day. D don't go from sp space to space chasing design squirrels. May go through this process with one room, whether it's your master, it's your kitchen, it's your bathroom, whatever it is, and then complete that step, C complete all the steps 
finish that space, enjoy it, live in it, love it, and then move on to the next. And then it's just a process. It kind of evolves and then your house becomes just a haven. It becomes a home and it's personal and it's unique to you and you fall in love with the process and you get really good at it. You find your style and you just, you know, know how to, you know, work your home. My bedroom is done. I got the vertical shiplap. I did some really fun pops of color in the pillow and the rugs. I just, I love it. I, I feel like it's finally done. But I've also made some design boards that I feel like you guys will love. So if you don't, like this process is even overwhelming for you, you can literally just grab this design for a master or a living or whatever. So I will link those down below along with, um, some Canva templates if you do want to make your own. So I hope this was super helpful. I hope it actually helps you finish your space. I hope you feel confident creating a home you love and inspired. So make sure that you like, subscribe, and have a good day.